What's up guys, I'm hanging out here in the Get'em Performance booth with Trevor Wiggins, owner of Get'em Performance. Trevor, how's it going today and how's your show been going so far? Oh, it's great. It's been a great PRI. I think it's going to continue to be great. The show has been now for two days. We're getting into our third day and we have just had people backed up in our booth all week long. So it's been, it's been a great, great show. Well, I know you guys have been super busy over here, so thank you so much for taking the time to sit down and talk with me here. But uh, get them performance. Let's talk a little bit about how we got to this point. How did get them get started? Tell me a little bit about you and your family, your company, and uh, you do this all in house. We do. We we try to manufacture everything we can in house. We try to machine every piece that we can. We try to buy minimal parts. It's mainly a, buying aluminum or a raw stainless or steel or brass. Whatever we need to buy, we try to get as much in house as we can. We try not to ship anything out. Uh, that the whole idea of the precision pieces is you you know you can control it if you make it. So there's usually as much as possible that we can do in house. And as far as get them, how get them started. Uh, of course, I was in a couple of large manufacturers. I was with Holly for a few years. I was with Comp Cans for a few years. And before that, I was with DuPont for 20 years. And I grew up in motorsports, so I, I live, eat, sleep, drink motorsports from Bonneville to, to truck and tractor pulling to drag racing to any, any racing that we could crawl in. We usually try to do it. Well, you know, and you, you start getting older a little bit, and uh, you're, you're traveling all the time. We're at races all, every weekend. We're doing as much as we can possibly do. And, of course, you get married, and you have kids, and this thing of life starts happening. And then you start focusing a little bit more on your personal life as much as possible. And uh, then you, 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 your kids, and how get them really come about is it started with Grady, which is my oldest boy, who's now 15, Eli, which is my youngest boy, which... So he's 13 now, changed 13 two weeks ago, and now, uh, so Grady, Eli, Trevor, Motorsports is really how this kind of come about. Mm -hmm. So starting that side of it, uh, when I left Comp Cams, and I, I think the world of the guys at Comp Cams, it just, just a great group of people, a great group of owners. Uh, when, they, when they come back, I was like, you know, I, I kind of want to go home and try to start my own business. So that's really where get them really started to go, all right, can I do this? Can I physically do this? Can I make a better widget? Can I make more consistent widget? Can I make a more horsepower widget? And from years and years on the dyno, it, you start trying to, to connect as many racers that you've dealt with in the past to, to start going down that direction. So. And I think that's one of my favorite things. I mean, when we're talking about get them versus some of the other options, I mean, one thing that you focus so hard on is you want to work directly with the racers. I do. I do. I, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of it's kind of weird. We come into this industry, and this industry, I, I love every piece of this industry. So you come in, you grew up truck and tractor pulling, you grew up racing, you grew up that, that side of it, and then you get to you get in these companies and you start moving up. And you want more money. You're trying to travel. You're trying to do everything for your career, but then you, when you start realizing these big box stores or these these mill houses and everything, it's like I I really just want to deal with the racers. This is what's personal to me, and I want my kids to be in the racing industry as much as possible. So I want to deal with the racers. I want to deal with the engine builders. That's really where we wanted to excel. You know, a, a great mentor of mine, and, and I don't mind telling you who it is, it's Scooter Brothers. I, I think the world is Scooter. He always told me, you want your main customer is who throws the box away. So if that customer throws the box away, that's your main guy. So I always try to focus on who throws my box away as much as possible. Awesome, awesome way of thinking. So, talk a little bit about the carburetors. I mean, what makes the Get'em carburetor different than any other option that's out there today? You know, there, there's, there's a lot of things that we do. You know, a, a lot of people use different jets. A lot of people use different air bleeds. A lot of people do different things. And thread pitch is the same, all this stuff. But when, when you really get into some of the details... The whole, the whole idea of being consistent, the whole idea of, okay, not depending on a cast piece coming in and you're, you're hoping that the, the mold shift or the, the casting process is exactly accurate. The, the whole idea was starting with a billet piece of aluminum and start machining. When you, when you drill a hole in something, you want to know how precision that is. So you take a pin gauge and you, you measure it. But in, in the end, when you start machining that, you know, the bracket racers today are, are, are just unbelievable. I, I watch the junior races today. You're, you're talking five dead two, oh, yeah. two dead two, three dead five. I mean, it's just unbelievable. And that precision a lot of time is not necessarily always in a cast piece. Mm -hmm. So to get those kind of details, and 
You know, I, I watch some of the guys at the Million this year, and I, and I have a lot of great customers that, that run that series. Uh, those guys, some of their worst lights all weekend long was a, was a triple oh five. So you kind of go, oh, well, that's awesome. And, and then they go, well, we want a car that's, that's consistent. So you try to make it as consistent. So making the, the whole idea of get them performance and the detail side of it is we, we don't allow something to go out of our shop that we haven't touched or we haven't had our hands on. I mean, everything we do is hand-built. We know if, if, if there's a hole drilled in, I've had a pin gauge through it. If, the, if a jet says a 200 on it, it it's a 200. You're going to put a pin gauge to that jet. If it says a 32 air bleed, I'm 100% positive that, that a pin gauge has been through that other third two. So as far as what makes get them performance different from everybody else, really kind of gets into those decisions about don't let it go out. Precision. I mean, on top of that, you guys got the twin blade carburetor. Um, is a little bit different than what you typically see compared to like a four bell or, or something like that. You got the two-piece bowls, tighten metering blocks. There's a lot of neat trick features on the get em carb. Can you speak to that a little bit? Yeah, you bet. Uh, the biggest thing, of course, Dominators didn't come out to the mid-80s. So when that mid-80s come around, they was trying to put in annular boosters. So that was another big, big stair step from a down leg versus the, the uh, 4150 style carburetor. So how can we put an annular booster in? So you've got to make it bigger. So we, everybody went to a Dominator, which is a 4500. So when we go down that road of the twin blade, the twin blade, a lot of times, if you take a four-barrel carburetor and shove air and fuel through a, through a cylinder, it's going to want to converge at the very bottom. So the twin blade really has no negative pressure underneath the bottom, so you don't have to run that shear plate or that super sucker or any of those type of products to help, help form the air to go. It actually is, is right up front with the twin blade carburetor going down through it. It's all about flow and less turbulence under the carburetor. More horsepower, more consistency. That's correct. Less turbulence underneath. And, and a lot of times we're trying to put things in an intake or we're trying to make things to get the most horsepower. The pro stock guys really figured this out a long time ago. Their intakes designs were just, you know, you get into Sunset Performance Engines. You get into those guys that were doing all the, the, the pro stock trucks. Those guys, when they start talking about volumetric efficiencies, those guys were 90, 95, 100%. And then the more intake design that they come out and carburetor design that come out, they were getting 120% 120 volumetric efficiency, which those motors are really three horsepower per cubic inch. Wow. So that, that's unbelievable on a, on a natural aspirated motor. All right. Helicopter view question here. From the perspective of a bracket racer like me, you know, more horsepower, more consistency, simplicity, why carburetors at all? Why are we not seeing more bracket racers go down the road of fuel injection? Like, why are carburetors still the go-to option in the bracket racing world at all? You know, that's awesome, Tom. You ask those questions. You know, and, and if most people know my past a little bit. I ran Super Comp for years. I ran Top Dragster for years. And, and I'm, a, I'm a racer at heart. I really am. Now, I went down that fuel injection road. I'll admit this right up front. And I'm not saying I won't ever be back in fuel injection. I, I, love, I love motors. It doesn't really make a big difference. But when it really comes into, uh, when it really comes into I want to race, I, I spent about five years on, on an EFI system that I still bleed today, and I think it's a great system. But a lot of people just want to race. If you just want to race, or, you know, we, we could go from Bristol, Tennessee in a fuel injection, and then we could go out to Vegas, and then we'd run Vegas, and we'd come back to Michigan, we'd run Michigan. Well, every time we went to each individual location, we had to build new maps. We had to build new, mm -hmm. a lot of times the car wouldn't even do a burnout because the map sensor, the KPAs that was in those map sensors wouldn't get to that same, same elevation. So what we'd try to do then is say, all right, what, how, how do we stop doing it? So we would get to a track and we would, we would get it where it idle, we'd get it where it would launch, we'd get it where it would do a burnout, we'd get it where it'd, it'd, it'd run down, down track, we'd get it where it'd go on a throttle stop. Well, you know, you put the carburetor on it, it would just go run. It would auto We're talking simplicity and simple tools, no computers, am I right? No, no, That's what no. That's racers want. No, it, well, exactly. And, and the year that I was running, the hardest I ever ran was the EFI, great year, won a lot of races, but when it really come down to it, it was like, well, 
am I going to tune or am I going to race? Mm-hmm. I found myself tuning a lot more than me working on the, how good I drove this stripe or how good I launched a car or how, what my lights was. You know, I, when I went back to a car rep, say when I was EFI, I'd spend so much time, you know, tuning that my lights would be 18, 25, 32, 65. You'd throw a, you know, when I went back to a carburetor, it was bing, bing, you know, 10, 12, Focus 11, 5, 7. So he was always in. So I was focused on driving and racing more than I was focused on tuning. Awesome. Awesome feedback. Thanks so much, Trevor, for taking the time to sit down with me. I know you're a busy guy, especially in an environment like PRI. Uh, you sat down here, took the time. I appreciate that. Obviously, you guys can be found all over social media. These links will be down in the description, but where's the absolute best place that people should find Get them. Where should they go? You know, go to our website, you know, PM me on Facebook, you know, and, 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 and I got to say thanks to you, Tom. I mean, you've got a great group of racers. You know, you talk about Mitchell McKinney. You talk about, you, you know, what you do. You start talking about, oh, your Dale Skates. Again, you've got some of the best guys out there, and I, and, and I enjoy you guys. I do. I enjoy watching you guys go rounds every time, and we have a big screen up at our shop, and I, I promise you, every time there's a bracket race on, Nine times out of ten, I'm watching to see if I'm not at that race. We're, we're watching to see who goes rounds, who's not going rounds, what happened. A lot of times we'll call, going, "Hey, what happened? Mm-hmm. What, what, what? Did you miss a tree? Did it, did it hesitate? Did it do all these things?" Going because we want to know. I mean, it, it happens to all of us. So it's like, all right, but we're watching. So, you know, call. Uh, my, my wife's heavily involved in the business. My kids are heavily involved in the business. A lot of times my kids will answer the phone. So it's, it's, if they're there on Sunday night, a lot of times somebody's going to still answer that phone as much as possible. So, and I, and I, like you said earlier, I do miss some things here and there. But gosh dang, it's not that I would keep calling. It's not. We're just busy. We're running pretty hard as we can. So, You guys, links down in the description to Getem's website. Of course, follow them on Facebook at Getem Performance. Also linked down in the description. Trevor, thank you so much for taking the time. Nah, thank you, brother. I appreciate, I appreciate what you do for us.